Thank you, thank you. 
towards us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so grateful for what the Lord is doing in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. Man, will disappoint you. Husband and wives are going to have conflict, but God remains faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love the Lord today and we want to try to minister something very sincere on our heart as the Lord is 100% shifting the house of God. Yes. I keep saying the only thing I'm in a hurry for is to do what he said. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, I thank you. Remember the song said, you don't know what God knows, what he's done for me. You don't know what God knows, what the Lord set me free. Some folks are still back to the thing. Deliberate. It's deliberate. There's no reservation to loving Jesus. You can be cautious in how you want to love flesh, but Jesus, you can just let it all out. There's no reservation how much you want to love Jesus. He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to take advantage of you. He's not going to see you vulnerable. He's just going to take it.
Oh, my God.
casting spirits out, or however you might want to label it, um, it it's like it's, it becomes a quick fix in the, in the respect that you got the devil off of me. Uh, the man that had his son who was a lunatic, and the Bible said that we had to put him out of the city because he cast himself among stones, he cuts himself, nobody could deal with him. He was such a bad case and have been this way for so long, we got to put him out of the city. Jesus, in one moment, yes. said, I cast you out in Jesus' name. The lunatic demon left the man. That's the power of deliverance, that God can absolutely set us free. Now, here's the challenge, though, and here's what I would call the lack of balance, is because once that enemy have been freed from me, the deliverance ministry, if I can use that, what we sometimes suffer from is now the substance to stay free. Yeah. 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 And the teaching yeah. and the understanding how to stay free. Uh, my father, who was a phenomenal teacher, my mother boy, who was a very powerful, carried a very powerful gift of deliverance and casting out demons. Uh, the combination of the two, it never, it, um, how can I say this? We didn't know how to, to mesh them to get the full benefit. So we ended up having kind of sort of like two separate churches in one church. You have people that would come when Mother Boy was in town, and then you would have people that would be there for Bible study, but they wouldn't be there necessarily when Mother Boy was in town and vice versa. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so the challenge was, even though you got that great impartation on Monday night, you needed to have been at Tuesday night Bible study to know how to keep. So the thing that we have to be very cautious of, and I get, I get a little personally offended because, um, uh, and I do, I get personally offended because I know that was the label of what my upbringing was, was considered a deliverance ministry. And they consider deliverance ministry some on the outside, that they're very emotional, but they ain't got nothing, you know, they don't do nothing, they're just emotional. They just like to run around and blah, blah, blah. And here's the thing, yes, I am very emotional because I'm passionate about Jesus. And I'm not going to give the Golden State Warriors a greater cheer than I'm going to give God. And yes, I am absolutely, and I'm right about it, because he told me to love him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I'm 100% right to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's a noise. It may be loud to you, but he said it's joy. But in, in that kind of worship, what we have to, we can only grow by wisdom. And so the challenge has been the growth. And so if we don't understand what God is talking to us about, about the apostolic anointing and coming into the church and the apostolic doctrine, uh, or, or the apostles' doctrine is what I should say. The Bible said that uh, he was talking about the left Thessalonians like the church. And as it was being established, he said these were more noble than they, the Thessalonians, like in that they searched the scriptures daily. So the more that I understand his word, then the more I can become established and grow. Right. And in this season, the Lord wants growth. Right. He wants growth. He wants growth from us personally. He wants growth in our lives. He wants growth in the ministry. He wants growth. And you cannot grow without wisdom. Wisdom is how you grow. So what becomes a challenge to people who are drawn to a very happy and deliverance church is when it's time to apply wisdom. Because right now, I just want the fix again. And I want the fix again. And every time I come to church, I want you to give me that fix again. I want to be able to shout again. I want to rejoice again. I want to fall out again. And I do too, again. But when I get up, I am busy. So let's go to the presentation. And I, and, I, and I wanted to take my time with this, so I hope I can, I can minister it um, because it's such a serious subject that God is asking us to learn to embrace. We, we can go to the first slide. That God is asking us to embrace. So here we go. Familiar passage of scripture. Three different versions because I thought all three of them were pretty profound. So the NIV version, Proverbs 4 and 7, says the beginning of wisdom is this. 
get this. Get it. And though it costs everything you've got, get an understanding. King James Version, put it simple again. So Prince of Wisdom is the principle, it's the basic. It's the basic thing, therefore get it. But don't just get the wisdom, get the understanding of the wisdom. So don't quote to me what it says. Do you understand what it means? Then the last one said, wisdom is supreme. So get it, and whatever else you get, you don't get nothing else. If you're going to get a hand laid, if you listen to me, if you never get prophesied to, if nobody ever calls you out, if you never get touched, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't never shed a tear, none of those things dictate I got it. Right. Wow. Right. <laughs> the only thing that dictates I got it is wisdom and then understanding. So we've got to allow this shift that God is doing. That I know why we're here. And we are drawn for the for the spirituality. We are drawn for the truth. God talk about me. We are drawn for the travailing prayer. We are drawn for the spirit. He said, but it, it cannot be more thirsty of that than wisdom. You cannot want that touch more than you want wisdom. You cannot. Yearn for an experience of trapped out of your mind more than wisdom. Because those things can fade. So what happens is you get that experience, you come into the house of God, and if I don't keep having that experience Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Yes, talk about it. Then now I'm in balance how I'm living. Talk about it now. Yeah. Talk about yeah. it. Because that touch is not going to tell you how to act on your job. Right. 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 That touch is not going to tell right. you how to be a husband or wife. Right. right. Wisdom will. Yeah. And if I get wisdom, if I never get a touch, I know how to handle my everyday life. Yeah. 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 He says, so whatever you get, don't just get a quote. Search it till you understand it. The best way of understanding, they call it check understand. And that means repeat back to me what I just said in your own words. It's called checking understand. And you've got to be able to say what somebody explained to you, but say it in your own understanding. And Jesus, being sensitive that we learn differently, gave all kind of parables. Because he was checking for understanding. What did he do when he talked about the seed and the sword? And he's talking to everybody. And then the disciples behind the scenes said, yo, Jesus, that was, woo, that was pretty deep. Uh, but you can't break it down to us again. Because we need to understand what did you mean about the seed and the sword? How many times through the scriptures the Bible said, now decided to disciples pull them together. Now I need you to really understand. I'm going to talk in the mystery to others. But my children, I need you to understand. He says, so in all the wisdom that you get, don't just get the wisdom, don't just quote a whole bunch of scriptures, but get the understanding. Next slide, watch this. Because wisdom is not proven until it's applied. I don't know it to be true. I don't know it to work. I don't know what fruit comes out of it until I apply it. And if I don't take wisdom and apply it, then it's just a whole bunch of mouth. Right. Um, uh, my sister, my 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 sister, my niece, the, the holistic thing, and blah 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 blah. And they, I mean, like, you know, my, my daughter said, you know, mom, I'm not sure. And if my sister's watching, she already said to her, you're like, mom, you know, I'm not sure about trying to be around Auntie Sybil for long periods of time because I don't think we want to eat grass. We don't want to <laughs> have to get a burger or something. So my sister, this beautiful young woman, my sister who's older than me, my niece have had her on this regimen for a minute. 
And my sister is so gorgeous. And I watched her complexion change. I watched dark circles come from out of her eyes. I watched her drop weight. I watched her look incredible. So her dog could have told her every day, Mom, if you just eat some kale, Mom, if you do this, and all it would have been is wisdom, but it wouldn't have had no weight. So for me, I'm a believer. Don't judge me. I'll try it eventually. But for me, I'm a believer because I saw it apply. Right, right. And I see the results of that wisdom. Nothing can make me now question that it will work. So wisdom is not wisdom until it's applied and now you see it. But wisdom crying in the streets. Hello? Don't be a fool. The Bible said wisdom crying. You don't have to go that route. Hello? But you won't hear. And you won't apply. Ah, okay, we gotta go here. Let's keep going. Next slide. Here we go. Now, I want to talk about four areas of life. Wisdom, cry, cry. I know these are very, very, very tiny scriptures. I'm sorry about that. And we'll do better next time. This started in a conversation with my daughters. And as they had made up their mind, they were going to go to UCLA. And they were saying to me, hey, mom, you know, if we want to go, we got some other friends that want to go. Hey, this is how it started. He said, you know, if we want to go, if some other friends want to go. He said, you know, is it possible that we can be in the same class? I said, yeah, you know, y'all choose the same such class. Blah, blah, blah. And he was like, cheese the like, because I'm, I'm doing my own uh, psychological thing, and their dad and I are making them believe that college, the high school is nothing. Just, psh, who cares what high school goes? It's all about college. That's right. It's about college. That's where life starts. Right. Well, I'm doing that because we need them to stay in a uniform school until they get out. I need them to say they want to go to a regular school and wear regular clothes. Anyway, so we start talking about potential. And the conversation became, what is potential? And so I drew a graph and we showed them how potential is this little bitty guy. And the only way that you reach the max potential is something's got to push you there. You got to know how to get there. I won't say I fear, but I am extremely conscious and cautious that I live my full potential. I'm not fearful, but I'm cautious, I'm conscious of my choices and my decisions in everything because I want to be at my max potential. So what happens in the church is we come to Jesus because we need him. We come to Jesus because we're in situations we can't get ourselves out of. We come to Jesus because we are broken. We come to Jesus because we love him. We come to Jesus because of various reasons. But as a believer, we want to be careful and cautious and conscious that I reach my max potential now that I have Jesus. And that takes a conscious applying and application continually of his wisdom. You will not reach your max capacity from your wisdom. And you have to stay open. You have to stay broken for God to continue to teach you his wisdom that you go to your max potential of life. Shout hallelujah. I think that is why he said, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared. It's already there for them that love me. But I've got to teach you wisdom how to get there. And you will not get there by prayer only. You will not get there. No, no, I need you to hear me. You will get there by dedication to the church only. You won't get there by your amazing gifts only. The way 
your maximum potential is by wisdom being applied in the areas of my life. God, I love you so much. Go I see. You don't have to have a struggle in there. Because we are witty, yes. right. we are 
are sharp. Right. We come up with all kinds of creative stuff. Yeah. But because we ain't got no money, yeah. they don't hear your city council. They put whatever schools they want in your community. Right. Y'all not gonna let me work this. Right. You get the worst of banks. Yeah. They rip you off with high interest. Y'all not gonna let me tell the truth. Yeah. And you get upset. Cause you say I'm not stupid. Yeah. And everything you say, if you weren't stupid. Why you ain't got no money? And it made me say, let me stop being a fool. Because yeah. I don't care what you say. You're respected more yeah. when you got money. Y'all yeah. 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 better tell the truth. It's not the smile of issue. Unless I've already paid cash. 
father no ten times. Hello. Come on, give me wisdom. And we cannot speak in tongues. No problem. So we'll come back to Jesus again. Because we need another fix 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 again. All because you won't apply the wisdom. So you will never be here again. You will never struggle again when you learn my plan for finances. So the Lord said to me, He said, So you have many gifts, Tammy. People got powerful gifts. He said, But people can't even respect hearing them. Cause you need a ride home because you got your own car. Yeah. I know you yeah. I'm going to hurt some people. Because yeah. yeah. the old folk used to say, because you ain't got to have one in the crowd. Yeah. And I ain't going to say the other part. To the pop. To the pop. To the pop. You demand I respect you. Yeah. I don't want you to misinterpret this message. Please don't listen. I'm begging you. Do not listen to this message. Because what jumped out at me is that the poor man didn't have a voice. Right, right, right. And so God will raise people up to have a voice for those that are in trouble. The other week, my husband uh, is a consultant work at a major nonprofit organization here in the city. And so he asked me to come to the fundraiser. Crazy money. Crazy money is there. Crazy money. And very affluential people. So I'm sitting next to one of these powerful people. And the whole thing was about the young women of this organization. And these young women were the servers. And I have no words. It like brings me to tears. I have no words how these women bless me to tell me how much um, my husband is impacting their lives and giving them real skills. Y'all know he don't play. So everything before then, they said it was just pushing them through. They said, but they're learning real kitchen terms, cutting terms, how to hold things, how to really do it right. So I'm looking at these ladies, sir, and I know my husband's touch. Yeah. It was beautiful, Wanda, it was yeah. beautiful. And I'm watching these young ladies serve. Now, just from my eye view, I'm watching the tables around me. And I'm watching the young ladies bring the platters, bring the pitcher of water. Y'all want some more water? You thirsty? It's all good. <laughs> but I'm monitoring how none of these wealthy people are saying thank you. Now, it's all about the girls, though. I'm watching this. I ain't crap, I'm watching it. And they're putting the platter down, picking up the platter. I mean, I'm kidding, you hand me that like, Girl, you're doing your thing. And then I watched, of course, because they need these donors to give the money. So they asked the girls to give their story, one of the girls. Now, you know, the funny is like, you know, I'm looking at these people and I'm like, you know, some of these stories, I'm like, do you know who I am? Do you know what we do on a regular basis? So, but I'm looking at these young ladies tell their story, and I know they're uncomfortable. Because you're asking me to relive some of the most horrible times of my life. But it works for you. So there's no sensitivity that I have to relive this every time I tell it. So one of the girls I watched you say, and she gives a very high level. You know, I was in Joyce at 16, and I got into some stuff. This is just basically almost what you see, you know, and I, I lost my kids, but you know, I'm doing better now. So tell more. Yeah, but tell them. Uh, yeah, tell them. So the girl looked. So she tells a little bit more. Yeah, but tell that other part. Yeah. And I feel the girl. So she does, and then she backs away. Then another girl comes, and she tells her something. When it was all over, I'm taking selfies with the girls. I go back to the kitchen. I said, girls, y'all are amazing. I barely talk to different mom mad at these folks. Right, right. Doing selfies with the girls. You know, went to the back. So 
the one girl that they kept me. I, I went to her and I said, you know, it's rough telling that story over and over. She just bawled and cried. I said, I feel you. I said, people forget. There's no difference in humanity. I'm human. Right, 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 right. When money don't make you better than me, I am human. So when I heard that scripture about the poor man, it leaped out. The Lord says that's what the daughter's eye is all about. That's what the food closet is all about. That's what the feed program is all about. Be a voice for the people that they won't hear. Right. Because they are wise. Yeah. And you give me one more chance to watch and see what I'll do with my life. Yeah. So, don't get this message twisted. But the Lord is saying, but when I come to you, yeah. you cannot stay in the mentality of what they said about you. Yeah. Right. I need you to come with me to watch me make you rich. He started earning. 
So now I was cutting an onion or something. I gotta make the sound on my cut. So I'm cutting the onion. <laughs> he was standing over me. Okay, babe, I got this. Because 
you're going to change. And what completed you at that? I don't need you to tell me cute at 45. I, I need to be fine and sexy at 45, not cute. No, I'm not
express that with my husband, building family. What is he talking about? Time is going, time is going. Here we go. Intellect, powerful. Intellect. Who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge? James 8, 3, 13. Among you, watch this. Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. Intellect means I am watching and monitoring your ability to comprehend. Intellect is your ability to comprehend, reason, uh, put things together, make it make sense. And I understand your ability of intellect based on what I see in you. Intellect speaks by your lifestyle. Intellect speaks by your behavior. As a man thinketh in his heart, out of the abundance of the heart, I know what you are by what you give me. I don't care about what you say. I'm looking at your life. And the, big, the biggest thing that we have to overcome is our fantasies. Is that you think you're one way, but in reality you're here. It's the fantasy of what you desire to be and what you actually are. And we have to struggle hard that I don't live in a fantasy and never apply what I desire in reality. Intellect makes me see me now. Intellect comes here where I am right now. Again, I use the example all the time. I can desire to be a doctor, but until I go to school, it becomes a fantasy. And it is just a dream. I said many times before, I can desire to be a size six, but as long as I'm eating that Brian's Carmel ice cream, it's just a fantasy. And so either I gotta stop eating the ice cream or give up that as a dream. Because my intellect says you are not a size six. That's my reasoning, my comprehension. What I reason, what I comprehend, that is what I apply. I gotta say that again. What I reason, what I comprehend, that's what I apply. Why do you not do what you think you should do? Because you never applied it. So that means you never comprehended it, you never in your intellect. It didn't click. It did not click. I don't care how much you think, it did not click until there's an application of it. Yes. Period. I don't care how much you've read the book, oh yeah, I read that book. Do you know how many people got books and books and books of different things, and yet I can't see none of that evidence in your life? I can have book after book after book of motivation and, and inspiration, and yet you stay depressed. Y'all yes. not going to let me work this. So then I, I don't say you have you took class after class after class, and class after class, yet you're still doing I don't know what, but it's not what you took the classes for. So I don't care if you paid all that money, you did all that student debt, and all that time, four years, six years of school, and the intellect did not connect with what you learned. If it did, you would have applied it. Intellect. What you see is what you get. Intellect is what you see is what you get. And we live in design. Yeah, right, right. And very few plan it in reality. And until you plan it in reality, it's not going to happen. So out of a meek heart is what he said. Okay, here we go. Physical, we got to go here. It shall be, talking about wisdom, wisdom, it shall be help yeah. to thy name. And I can't see it. And uh huh. Merle, to thy ball. I gotta go here. And we gotta pray. We gotta pray. I gotta go here. Are y'all okay? I told you. I, I told you. I, 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 I couldn't be able to finish. I couldn't finish it. Here. We gotta go here. Let's go to. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. We're in the intimate. Want to take my scripture. Uh, uh, anywho, this is a scripture. Hey, well, I'm paraphrasing. The Bible says, bodily exercise. Somebody find it for me. Bear with me. Bodily exercise. Crop of the little. But I need y'all to go here. I need you to go here. You got to go there. Somebody pull it up for me real quick. Keep the string going. Keep the string. So I, I, I had it. I wrote it down. Oh, oh, I know. First Timothy. Timothy. First Timothy. Four and eight. Hey, hey, I got a double mindset. Write it on your paper, Tammy, in case you don't remember to see it on your screen. And I wrote it on my paper. First Timothy four and eight. The Bible says for bodily exercise. Watch this. I heard this a lot. Right, right. Profitive little. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Watch this. Having promise of the life that now is. And of that which is to come. So my bodily exercise, the profit of it, is for the life that now is. My bodily actions, doing what I need to do to take good care of me, applying my wisdom 
to my lifestyle of what I eat and how I do my temple, which is the temple of God. He said, it'll do you good because it'll profit you while you're here. And we cannot, again, I cannot channel my prayers to an area I need help when God said there's wisdom that you don't have to be in that condition. Some things we can't control. Some things you just can't. Um, I, the young man from uh, 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 The Biggest Loser, the trainer, had a heart attack. One of the trainers, their key guy, was exercising and had a heart attack. Now, of course, the devil wants to say, see, don't you exercise and all that? But I said, we're beefing, you say, Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right, Brother Eric? Right. <laughs> You're fit. Shameless hug. Um, I've got to care yeah. if I'm in my best yeah. physical fit for God to use me. Yeah. Right. Right. I have to care because I'm his vessel. And he's going to use the vessel whether you are a gazillion pounds or two pounds. Right. He will use the vessel. But it's the length of time. And what can I really get out of it? And so the lack of being used doesn't have to be because we don't want to use you. But you physically cannot handle what I need to do. When we were in um, Chicago, again, profound prayer with our brother, Pastor Henry. And the first service um, that I did was a 5 o'clock and I did a 10 o'clock session. The 5 o'clock session, I ran up upon a lot of spirits unexpectedly. And it was literally taking my shirt. Like literally. Like, and I felt it. I was getting weaker and weaker. And so when my session was over, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, I want you to sit on this floor. Because they had an open type of setting. He said, sit on the floor. My next session wasn't going to be until 10. He said, and just sit and do nothing. Do very little worship, like, you know, moving. He said, just sit. That's what he told me. And rest your body. That's what he said. So I did. So I sat on the floor and enjoyed all the rest of the press. I got up a little bit. I didn't do much. Only because he knew. Right, right, right. In that 10 o'clock session, it's all. Right. I didn't know. I, I felt nothing, nothing, it's nothing except, okay, let me go change. My mind right here, I went to change. And he, it was like I was moving in slow motion. I was just moving really careful. But by that 10 o'clock session, he treated my body like a rag doll. You are over here and pray for this. And go over here. It, because <laughs> he don't care. I told you the rest. Didn't I tell you? When I got home, I'm telling you, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm telling you, I listened to the Holy Spirit. When I got home, for three days, I made major pots of greens. I, made, I ate major spinach salads. Because he told me to. Replenish your body. I was drinking my green drinks all week. So when y'all were, I, I appreciate you for worrying about me. And I want you to do that. But when I tell you, I listen to the Holy Ghost before I listen to y'all. I'm just telling you. Because he gives me signals. When to pull it in. When to pull it down. When to stay home. When it seems like I won't talk to you, it's not because I don't want to talk to you, it's because he told me to shut up and save your voice, save your strength. Are y'all working with me? There's wisdom even in our physical. And you have to care that you're a vessel of Jesus Christ. You don't have to care that people think you're sexy and cute, because that's not your goal. You care that I am physically equipped. That if he tells me to witness, and I gotta walk up and down these blocks, my feet aren't gonna swell, I can witness. Right. I'm not talking about you. Right. He says, so your bodily exercise, it will profit you in this life. Right. Yeah. Another passage of scripture says, why die before your time? 
Amen. And there have been many people that's allowed to stay time to go, but it didn't have to be. That's why they died. They died of crack here. It was just their time to go. No, they needed to give up that crack. Right. Why well, don't y'all let me tell the truth? Right. Yeah, it was just their time to go. No, their cholesterol was too high. The doctor told them to bring it down. They did not have to die. Why well, won't y'all talk right. back to me? Right. I know this hurts. I know it does. He said, but, hey, he said, tell me, but this is where the rubber meets the road for growth. Right. Yeah. right. He said, you got to pull it in. He said, because there will be no growth without wisdom. People will not grow. The house will not grow. And we will not reach our full potential if I don't apply wisdom. Everyone stand to your feet. Go to the next scripture. Uh, next one. I'm sorry, next one. Uh, uh, one more. Um, uh, everyone stand. Joe began to talk about wisdom. And this whole passage of Job 28 is so profound. Job said the topaz of Ethiopia is not equal to wisdom. He said, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Just a little worship. He said, where, so where are you, wisdom? When's coming then wisdom? And then where is the place of understanding? Job said, I went to the depths of the sea. I couldn't find you. He said, I looked in silver and gold. He said, I couldn't find wisdom there. See, it is hid from the eyes of all living, kept close from the files of the air. Job was saying, where is wisdom? Yeah. It's not in silver, it's not in gold. He said, look for you, he said, where is wisdom? It's not in the files of the air. Watch this, he said, destruction and death say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. Wait a minute, destruction and death. We heard about wisdom. But if it were applied, nothing would have been destroyed. And there would have been no death. Destruction. Because when wisdom is not applied, destruction happens. Things decay. Things are wasted. So death and destruction said, I heard about it, but obviously it wasn't applied. Y'all not talking back to me. When I don't care for things that I have, and it just gets better, because you didn't have the wisdom how to take care of it. Right. Right. Our car, uh, I love my little car, I call it our honeymoon car. It's 14 years old. <laughs> call it our honeymoon car, we drove all across LA with it. And we got it out shopping, and the engine is good, and I'm ready to get the interior done. And they said, Mom was riding it the other day, Mom said, oh, this show is a good riding car to be 14 years old. Because I tried to take care of it. Yeah, right, right. It didn't happen. Yeah, I ran that car for you. Get the oil change. Right. Treat it like you wanted to stay around a while. See it, body. Get the engine cleaned up. Act like you wanted to take care Because destruction happens when you don't have wisdom. Right. You lose houses when you didn't have wisdom how to take care of it. Furniture don't have to break. Right. You got wisdom. Watch this next one. Stay with me, y'all. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place where wisdom is. Oh, this is beautiful. For he looketh to the ends of the earth. This is God now. And he seeth under the whole heaven, the Lord, to make the weight of the winds. God does it. He said, and I weigh it. The waters by measure. This is, he said, when, when, I look at the, when I look at the Pacific Ocean, I'm able to swoop it up and know how much it weighs. Y'all not hearing about God. He said, watch this, go to the next, the next slide. He said, now, God, next slide, next slide. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it? And I, I, go back, go back. What are you doing? I'm reading. Go back, go back. When he made a decree, no, again, what is the problem? When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, 27th verse, then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. He said, when I decided rain, said, let it come about like this. I want the drops to be about so high. Here we go, in the 8, 28 verse. He said, I did all that in the earth. I did all that in the heavens. I did all that under the earth. But when I talked to man, and unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. 
and to depart from evil. As I looked at the whole earth, I looked above the earth, under the earth, I looked at gold, sapphire, he said, all of that, I handle that wisdom. I know how much water should be in the sea, I weigh it. <laughs> he said, when the clouds come down, I'm already monitoring how they should go. When the rain drop down, I know what kind of sides I want these drops to be. That's how I handle the earth. He said, but to man, the wisdom I say unto man, he said that fear the Lord is your wisdom. And when you depart from evil, it says you got an understanding. Next slide, here we go. He said, now, what is the ultimate wisdom? It's spirituality. Because what God does is he encompasses the entire man. God encompasses everything about us, our finances, our money, our health, our intellect. He said, I encompass all of it, and then I use it for my glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. We are growing, and we're going to keep growing. Because we're going to learn how to apply wisdom. Yes. I'm the first one. I want the impartations. I want the touches from God. But I need to get to my full potential in my finances. I need the Lord to not only bless, supernaturally bless my family. To our single brothers and sisters. He said to y'all single women. He said, how do you get to your potential? Get rid of that silly spirit. He said, I need you not to be a foolish woman. He said, that's given away with divers lust. Any man can say anything in your ear, and you hear it, and you believe it, and it swoops you up. Don't be a silly woman. Y'all talk back to me. He said, to my young men, the mother told the young man, she said, don't give your strength to women. Don't do it. Watch that strange woman, because she bring down strong men. She's going to entice you with her words. And she's going to say to you, it ain't all that. Nobody will see. Oh, there's a pastor, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing. It says something like um, um, the stealing of, of water. When you steal water, it's sweet. And when you sneak a piece of bread, it just tastes so good. The Bible said, and so is her hell and her pit. She lies and make you feel like it's all good. But all the time, she's about to bring you down to a great pit. So yes, single men, you build your own self as a family. Who are you as a king? When you're single, you start marking your life that you will be an honorable man. And whatever woman that gets you, it is her privilege to have a king that is an honorable man. Nobody let me want it. Nobody let me want it. To our daughters, your little line I work over here. And I'm not that desperate and I'm not that hard up. I want a man that wants Jesus, because if you get Jesus, you'll know how to treat me. Without Jesus, you'll never know who I am. You'll never know how to treat me. To the Lord. We gotta make some declarations, y'all. Get uncomfortable. Hands lifted, hands lifted, hands lifted. Being uncomfortable at 55 is great. Being uncomfortable at 70 is great. It means you're about to grow. Being in circumstances that make you twitchy and nervous is fabulous. Because you're about to grow. And if you continue to surround yourself, as the Archie, the Lord said to me, if you keep yourself surrounded by people that admire you, you'll never be advanced. If you're surrounded by people that admire you, you'll never advance yourself. Because you'll live in their flat. So get around people that are doing things better than you so it'll advance you. Y'all better help me. Keep your intellect glory. Keep your intellect. Get uncomfortable. Get in environments that make you uncomfortable. To my brother and my sister that's here today that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your first big step of wisdom. It's a fear of the Lord. What does that mean, fear? It doesn't mean I'm biting my nails that he's going to kill me. It means I reverence how great he is. That fear is a reverence that you are great and at any time you could take me out of here, but you don't. That fear is a reverence of how massive you are. It's how I can't hide from you. That's what that fear is. I can't hide from you. Where can I go? But you can't find me. What rock could I go under? What island could I be all by myself? And you won't find me. You are mass. 
You are great. And when I recognize that my life belongs to you and I really can't do what I want to do, that's the first beginning of wisdom. And the understanding is I'm going to change. That's the understanding. I'm changing. I need all hands lifted. I need prayer people to start praying. My first call to this altar is for those that say I'm coming into wisdom. When I say to you, I know today's message for some people, I can feel you cringing. And that's why I had to put that plug in to not be offended. Because don't ever think that God is not sensitive to your needs. That's what I love about him. I love him because he knows the why. Praise God is so coming. If you praise him for one, more will come. 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 I don't care if you at this pulpit or to the back door. If I need God to give me more wisdom, I'm coming. Praise him for one, more will come. Praise the one, Lord, will come. I need more hand claps to go. I need more hand claps to go. I need more hand claps to go. Praise the one. Come on. They're coming. 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 Praise them. They're coming.
I'm coming to you because you are my help. And I don't mind letting you know I need you. I don't mind letting you know I need your help. I need your help. I need you to turn some circumstances around for me. And if you do it this time, I'll listen.
worship Lord. Ministers will minister to the homeless. 
and pray with them and pray with them and pray for their healing and minister to them. Hallelujah. Every Thursday we want to have a new service just for them. I need praise that you're in the group coming to worship. You're going to be a part of that. Get out of our comfort. Hallelujah. God bless you, mother in the back. God bless you. Get out of our comfort is what he's saying. Get out of our comfort. And what he's telling me and showing me is church ain't going to be what you think it's going to be. When I say get ready for the volume, you don't know what I mean, but get ready for the volume. And your people get ready to be the blessing in all the earth. Praise the church. Oh, we are preparing our tithes and our offerings as we know that's how we give our blessing. We are honored to give God the first fruit. The first fruit means for this family, we understand it to be that we give God our gross. So we get 10% from our gross, not from our net, because the government took that. It is from our gross, because that is the first fruit. And for if, you, if you've if you never done it, when you start doing it, I promise you, you're going to start seeing an increase in your finances and needs being met that you're not even going to know how it happened. I don't know about you, but some sort of way at the end of the year, it doesn't seem like you did more than your money showed that it could do, because God will get the increase. This is wisdom in our finances. We pay our tithes and we pay our offering because it, it takes the curse out of our home. It gets the devourer out of our home. It doesn't mean that you won't be challenged. It means you won't be devoured. That means that God will always rebound you back. It means you won't be devoured. You won't be eaten up. It will never, your finances, your home will never be eaten up when you become a tither and a giver. So we sow because we are honored to sow. I need some people today First of all, Elder Q and I first. We need some people that are able to sacrifice and see the $50 today. This is above your tithes and your offering. If you do not have it, then we're not talking to you, but you can pray. But you can pray. But if you have it, then we're asking you to sacrifice and see the $50 above your tithes and your offering. This is summer months, and in summer months, just things change, and we're trying some things. Church, please just, just be patient. Please know we're working on a lot of things behind the scenes. A lot of things behind the scenes that's going to bring that influx of what we're looking for. And we're keeping our finances at a certain level so the banks and everybody can see that we are good stewards. Everybody say good stewards. There's never been a more challenging time for churches like it is right now. And banks have literally shut their doors on churches. When the recession happened, churches were closing. Y'all know that. They were closing left and right. And God kept us through the storm. Hallelujah. He kept us through the storm. So they are beyond meticulous. And there's few and far between banks that will do anything for ministries. But everything is still moving forward. And though the vision tarry, wait for it. It is going to speak and not lie. Hallelujah. So we are keeping ourselves in position. So that as we're doing different things behind the scenes, that there will be no problem. When we pray over every seed, we pray over every blessing, we pray over everything we do. We're looking for the will of God because God has the blessing that make it rich. There's no sorrow. Hallelujah. All right, all timers are standing. All seed swords are standing. Even if you are texting, please just stand so we can honor the Lord. Even if you're doing your seed by text, please stand. It is increasing. I'm seeing more and more people text by giving, which is fabulous. It's great. You get to see your own giving all year long. You get to see what you're doing. You can keep active time, which is great. So if you are a member or family member of this is Pentecost, I highly recommend that you establish yourself in it. It's just great. And if you're uncomfortable with it, that's fine. I totally get that. We will accept it any way you want to give. You can give a straight up cash, credit card, check, as long as your check is safe, safe to have a bill in the bank. That's all we ask. We'll take it anyway. But I am grateful for what the Lord is doing now. The blessing is that should should when this take place, um, and this is this is what the lady told us, and, and what's happening is it's just it's just prophecy. The lady sat with Sister Yolanda and I. She said, "Listen," she said, "We recognize how committed the workers are of your church, and we recognize the excellence in which you all are doing it. And if that would the scripture be true that one planet, one water, that God had the increase." This started with Sister Shalon, then it kept going with Ministry Dead, then it kept going with my mom and the different ones that planted, and then Sister Yolanda, an amazing team that's doing it now, is keeping it watered, and we're watching God at the increase. I need you to praise God for your sisters and brothers from the end of the Lord. 
So I don't know if you noticed our truck. Did y'all notice our truck? Hallelujah. That was from Sacramento Food Bank, the crazy part. So Tuesday, by the grace of God, we receive a brand new freezer. That's compliments to Sacramento Food Bank. So they have some kids. So how can I work this? And so when she was talking, so I said, well, she said, well, you know, we, we you know, you all got the grand truck. You know, you're getting your freezer on Tuesday. I said, yo, we need a refrigerator too. She said, okay, let me write that down. I said, if we got to do all this, we're going to need another truck too. Okay, let me write that down. She said, Pastor Bennett, whatever tools and resources you need, we will do our best to get them to you. I need y'all to act like God is on our side. Increase, here we come. Increase, here we come. That's why I said, I knew what I was saying in that message. I get, I get hard times. I get it. And that's why he asked the church to do it. He asked when I was sitting at that party, I just looked up when I was sitting at that party next to these political officials and things. I was getting irritated because they were talking like, you know, people just need to get themselves together and get on their feet. And I was getting more and more irritated because I saw their insensitive, how insensitive they were. That these are real people with real issues. And I, every, and every time that happens, I get more indignant and say, Lord, if you give me my own, I'll show the government how it should be done. No, but that's how I feel. No, that's how I feel. You give me resources, I'll show the government. People need love, they need genuine care, and help me get on my feet. Don't judge me, don't talk about me, just help me. If you can't help me, leave me alone. Seed is up high, seed is up high. I am so excited, I am so excited. Seed is up high, your phone is up high. Whatever you have, your envelope is up high. Father, I do thank you for the seed that we are sowing. We honor you, Lord, because you have honored us. You have honored us, Father, and you have continued to be good and you have continued to be a God and have supplied every one of our needs. Father, we thank you and have continued to keep a roof over our head and clothes on our back and shoes on our feet and we do not take you for granted we say thank you, thank you lord. lord we thank you because everything we touch it continues to prosper because of you father i thank you because you are already ordering our steps and you are making us the head and not the tail and we say thank you father we thank you that as we are posturing ourselves you are allowing the wealth of the wicked to be laid into the just hands and we say thank you now lord teach us even the more give us even more wisdom knowledge and understanding how to be great stewards of the things that you have allowed us to care for that we may put it back into earth and that it may bring forth fruit 30 60 and 100 fold anoint us to bless and help those that are less fortunate father as we strive to do thy will we thank you for the increase in this house we thank you for the increase of wealth we thank you for the increase of health we thank you for the increase of family we thank you for the increase of the harvest of souls we thank you for the increase of miracles supernatural wonders in this house and we continue to give your name all the glory all the honor all the praise and all the people of god said amen amen and come on and praise the
Father, we realize that the ordinary just won't do. And Father, we see, God, that we got to have a touch of wisdom, Lord, to go with the knowledge that you even want to share on today, oh Lord. Father, allow us to walk in the wisdom, Father, that you've given, oh God. Allow us to apply, God, hallelujah, every word, Father, every hallelujah instructions, God, that you have given us, even on this month, this week, and this year, Lord. That we may come into the people, Lord, hallelujah, that you called us to be, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our pastor. Father, restore strength now, Lord. Father, restore virtue now, oh God. Hallelujah. Father, restore, God, hallelujah, everything she has poured out, God. Hey, Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, let the wisdom of this house begin to go abroad, God. Hallelujah. That it, hey, that it will draw, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men, Father, hallelujah. Women, Father, to come and be saved. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the service. Father, we ask that you bless us as we go, Father. From this place, whenever your presence walk us and touch us and keep us. Come on, everyone say amen. 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 Come on, hug your neighbor. Show love to the neighbor you are.